year history. The editorial board has only endorsed one candidate for president, Herbert Hoover, in 1928. Now, today, a member of that editorial board has broken with that tradition and written her own op-ed endorsing Hillary Clinton, writing, Clinton's election alone is what stands between the American nation and the reign of the most unstable, proudly uninformed, psychologically unfit president ever to enter the White House. Joining us now is Pulitzer Prize winning columnist Dorothy Rabinowitz a member of the Wall Street Journal's editorial board and the author of that piece. Dorothy, thank you very much for joining us tonight. It's a real honor to have you here. And, and it's a, I just want to say, it is a beautiful piece and it's, it's just a lovely work of Dorothy Rabinowitz prose before we even get to what's in it. But what, what made you break with this ancient now Wall Street Journal tradition of not speaking the name of a candidate? Oh, this is not breaking of anything. I want you to think of a very diverse group of people of the same general political mind who can simply write what they want. Mm -hmm. No one tells you what to do. Uh, I mean, think of your lineup. In columns, but in the editorials, they don't yeah. choose well, that's a right. candidate. And, but this was not an editorial. Yeah. This, editorials are unsigned. And uh, generally speaking, it got a huge response, mm -hmm. a lot of hate mail, uh -huh. and, uh, but a lot of the other kind, too. But you ask a question that you know the answer to. We have lived for a year and a half with Donald Trump. And Donald Trump has shown himself to be exactly, in my view, as I described him. And there is this little irritation grown very large. These people who are telling me, I can't vote for Hillary Clinton. I just can't do it. And when you realize the consequences of I just can't do it, that Donald Trump could be the president of the United States, you just say to yourself, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and Donald Trump? Mm -hmm. This is what, what happens in those conversations when you come up against that, I just can't vote for Hillary Clinton? What happens is my blood pressure goes up to 280 because it is said by people who are one's closest friends, people you've known for years and respected for years. So there's a mystery in all of this. There is a mystery of Hillary hatred mm -hmm. that I have never been able to plumb. I do not understand it. I don't have that gene. And I know everything she did, and uh, it was heroic, contemptible. But here's the bottom line. The bottom line is there is nothing that Hillary Clinton can do, has ever done, that could remote equal the terror, the catastrophe of waking up after Election Day and saying, Donald Trump is president of the United States. It is simply beyond imagination. But like the atom bomb, you know, we grew up after the war and we knew one thing. This is the unthinkable. This is our unthinkable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you've had your eye on life in New York for a, a while. Time. Is there anything that's been revealed to you about Donald Trump in this presidential campaign that you didn't already know or sense about him as a person? I knew this. I remember him. The fact is, we were all New Yorkers together, and that, that's where it was. We went to all of the parties in the 80s at Roy Cohn's home. People, the intelligentsia and the literati were all there paying homage. Uh, Barbara Walters was one of his friends. and. What happened now, however, Trump has endangered himself in a very permanent way with this. Before this happened, he was this uh, cavalier, oafish, very pleasant guy, everybody liked, nobody. Everything has now been undone. The revelations that we have seen, and you know all of the instances, the next column somebody should write is, the 10 best Trump hits, you know, from John McCain, mm -hmm. the things that you don't forget, mm -hmm. the things that you can never forget, that this guy who had five deferments, who had one bruised toe or something, mm -hmm. could say that John McCain was no hero, who refused to be repatriated, uh, and who was tortured. And why did he say that? Because it occurred to him, 
he's a, an onstage comedian. Let me see, can I get away with this? It's like watching an adolescent say, how far can I push this, folks? Yeah. How far? And it is an adolescent performance. We have an adolescent candidate here dressed in you know, the clothes of a contender. You have to ask yourself how we got here. But Hillary is the question. The question is why? And somebody could give me the answer. The number of people who have said she is just, I said, but do you not think that the Donald Trump would be an immensely greater danger? I don't care. So I don't, don't care when you bring up that danger. No, no. I'm going to sit home. Now, the virtuousness that goes into, I am going to sit home. We are not speaking here of young people who can do that sort of thing. Yes, yes, well, I'll vote for, you know, right. Johnson. I'll vote for, uh, they're talking about something else. So there is a kind of self-indulgence and a kind of moral, there's a kind of moral vanity that goes into this. And that is really the enraging part. When you consider the danger, the danger mm -hmm. that we're talking about. Uh, with the polls, what they are. I don't think any minds are going to be changed, by the way. People have made the cliche of the season as it's baked in. Mm -hmm. Everything is now baked in. Maybe people will soon understand, maybe the millennials, uh, contemptible phrase, the millennials, <laughs> but uh, maybe they can uh, figure out that this is not going to be a good thing. We will know soon enough. Dorothy Rabinowitz, thank you very much for coming in tonight. I really appreciate it. That's thank it. you. Nate Silver has changed his projections in the presidential campaign. That's next.